Okay, you guys are back with Armchair Engineer 85. We're wrapping up this um, KitchenAid dishwasher project. Uh, so anyways, here is the hose, uh, the water inlet hose. Uh, you can see the hole in the floor there, and that's obviously hooks up to the water inlet valve uh, to the dishwasher. Now, there used to be a dishwasher at this house. It was about well over 10 years ago, and the dishwasher was probably from the 1980s. So anyways, we are hooking this back up, but there is an existing copper line here that was originally feeding, same with that hole that was cut away. Um, that's what was feeding the dishwasher. So I tried this water valve here. I put a temporary, it's not on there right now, but I put a temporary uh, blocker on there and I just wanted to see like the water valve here and it, in, it, it indeed leaked. So um, I was going to keep that valve and hook up another uh, valve on this one. So technically I would have two, which yeah, it's silly, but I mean, it was a quick install. But because this valve is leaking, I'm going to um, omit it. And I'm able to do that because this hose here is long enough that I can go past here and put the fitting that I was going to put on here and just move it to this side here and eliminate that leaking um, leaking valve. So first thing we're going to do is this, oh, by the way, is a hot water line uh, for the dishwasher, obviously. And my hot water tank is right here. And I've got my cold uh, water uh, ball valve right here. So I'm going to close it right now. And then that will obviously shut off the pressure um, for the hot water here. And I've got my drain or my water tub here. And I'm just going to open up the hot and just let it drain. And that's what we'll do. And I will open up this and as you can see the cold water still flows because it does is not um, reliant on the hot water heater obviously because it's cold water but we have verified here that the hot water the pressure is relieved so now i'm going to go up here and i'll open this up and i'll just have a just in case a catch bucket here just to catch any residual water that uh, could bypass it all right so i got my catch bucket here and we're just gonna open this up and just see, you can hear it. There's a little bit of residual and you can even see the drip. That was, that was a little drip there, but that's good. So now I can get to work and I can use my little um, copper pipe cupper, uh, cutter and I can cut out this side here, eliminate this. And I'll show you what I got in mind for hooking uh, this uh, inlet hose up. Okay, so I got my little handy dandy uh, pipe cutter here. I've got my catch bucket directly underneath. I'm using the uh, stand right now. So I'm just gonna cut this out. I mean, yeah, I could measure here. Yeah, that'll give me some slack. So it's not, I'm uh, not using every inch of it here. But anyways, I'm just gonna show you guys what you do. You back it off. These things are great. I, there, I, saw, I saw a video on YouTube where the guy used a grinder, which is incredible. I mean, these things are so dirt cheap and small. So we just keep turning it ever so slowly. Every turn, give it a little, little turn on the knob to the right. You can even go a couple. Here we another. Switch arms if they get tired. There's 
for my catch bucket comes in handy. Always have a catch bucket, guys. Because cleaning up sucks. And you will always have residual no matter what. So what we're going to do after this uh, drains here, um, I'm going to show you how to prep the pipe to get the best connection so that it's leak free. And I'm going to show you the type of connector that we're going to be using. So the drip is slowing up. Decent amount of water came out. Like you wouldn't want that on the floor. That would suck cleaning it up. But um, anyways, this is what we're using right here. We're going to use a shark bite. Uh, love them, hate them. Some people think they're great. They're easy. The pro guys, maybe they hate them. I don't know. It, it just is what it is. If they're installed correctly, they will work. I know some people say, well, who knows about the longevity of them? Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this here. I've got some pretty old shark bites back here. Uh, it's pretty dark. You can't see, but um, let's see if I can use this light here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I got some old ones here, and they've been there for quite a while, and there's been no problems at all, no leaks. Will they go 50 years? Will they go 60 years? I don't know, but I bet you those ones are... 15 20 or more years old so anyways just thought i would point that out to you um so that's what we're going to do and i'm going to show you how to uh prep the surface of this uh, pipe so the drip is basically almost stopped now um now they do make a special tool for this shark bite it's about 20 dollars canadian uh plus tax like actually i think it's like 21 plus tax and it's a deburring tool and it's a two in one. It's a deburring tool and a depth, uh, a depth gauge. Um, if you don't want to pay that, you can do two things. You can deburr it. You can use an X-Acto knife oh, right there, right there. And you just on the inside, ever so gently, you just ring it. You don't have to dig in. It's copper, copper soft. You just go around and that's all you do. You just take the burrs out. You feel with your finger. You know, any rough spots, that's all you're going to do. And that just gives the connector a better uh, a better seal. And there is a seal on the inside of these connectors. Um, if I was doing this a lot, yeah, I'd buy that little tool. Um, I don't do this. I, I barely do this at once a year, if that. So it's kind of hard to pay. Oh, you're probably closing in on 25 bucks after tax for this tool. But uh, maybe I should break down. I don't know. And buy it. But... For the meantime, I'm going to show you how that's one way of doing it. And these things are removable. Some people say, well, once you remove them, you can't use them again. I don't know. I've reused a bunch and never had a leak. Um, you can see here, let me get it close here. So that right there, that bottom of that little shoulder, that ridge, that's where it's going to bottom out. So what we can do is we can hold it up to the copper pipe and measure about right there. And that's going to be where approximately if going to bottom out. So we'll just do one of these. Try not to block it with my arm. We'll go about right there and just give ourselves a little gauge. Now I have no doubt that the, um, that the depth gauge would be bang on. I mean, it's, it's made by them, but uh, we're gonna try it without it here. So I'll just show you here. You can have hold her up there. So it's probably actually my line there, that's probably a little past. It probably won't even be in that far. It's probably going to be there. But it gives us a rough gauge of what we're looking at. And we're going to push it on here and send her home. Okay, so I think we overshot a bit here, but we're going to plunk this on here. Like I said, I'll try not to block with this arm. One, two, three, a nice smooth one. There we go, right there. Okay, this little cap here, but there's our seal right there. And I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm gonna take it at a, I'm gonna show you guys, let's see. All right, there's our final result. I use that strap up here just to uh, feed the uh, inlet hose uh, through there. And I got it hooked up there. I've got my valve closed right now. And I reinstalled that little uh, shoulder piece there. But um, I'll just show you guys here. Now I got a better view. There's our black line that we measured, and there is the yellow. And uh, yeah, quite confident here. This is just, I guess, a nice cover piece to keep it from showing there. 
So what we're gonna do now, like I mentioned, I got that closed because I got other stuff to do. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna close our cold water and there should be no leaks. Okay, just to test it, we'll even go here, hot water. There we go, there's the pressure. And we've got nothing there. And I've tightened this down here with a wrench. I didn't come onto it too hard, just uh, enough to seat. And I checked to make sure that the seal was in there. But when it comes time for us to uh, power this baby up and feed water to it and feed electric uh, electricity to it, and we've got the plumbing done, we're gonna check to make sure that there is in fact no leak there. But I'm feeling pretty confident because we measured, we deburred it, and everything is great. One thing I wanna mention with this is guys, never, never, never use like a sandpaper or a scuff pad on the copper as part of your prep work. I mean, some people I've heard say that, I got given that advice and guess what? It leaked when, um, when I did it. Uh, I deburred it with the knife just like I did and I used a scuff pad and guess what? It, uh, it leaked. So I have done a few of these since and I've just deburred it with a knife and I have not scuffed it and I've never had a problem. So if anybody tells you that, don't do it because if anything, it lessens the seal. You smooth out the copper and then just, it's another way to allow, um, uh, to allow water to get past the seal. So anyways, let's move on to our next step.